Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving the opportunity to mention something. And I want to agree, Honorable Speaker, with what uh, all the contributors to that statement, Honorable Speaker, are saying, that indeed our doctors are valued. And we all value our doctors because many of us depend on them. But, Honorable Speaker, it should not be lost to us that a decade ago, this country was only able to produce an average of 300 doctors from our two public universities that were churning out medical graduates. But today, courtesy of the huge investments that we have all made as a country in uh, ed our education system, we are churning out an average of 1,500 intern doctors annually. What that means, Honorable Speaker, is that the interns would have been taken in in five years are expected now to be taken in annually. And Honorable Speaker, I'm saying that just to draw the picture to Kenyans of the kind of resources that are required. And Honorable Speaker, also to put into perspective, the demands by our good doctors today are to be interned at an average of, I think, 206,000, 206 or 207,000 shillings. Honorable Speaker, I have listened to this debate even in the public domain, in the media. And what our doctors are being told, yes, it is possible to pay 206,000 shillings to intern doctors, but take up less interns than those who are graduating. Honorable Speaker, this year alone, a total of 1,210 doctors Intern doctors are being enlisted at a cost of 2.4 billion shillings within the resource envelope already allocated by this House, Honorable Speaker. So it's foolhardy for us to speak to the gallery to excite doctors at the gates of Parliament. But it's another thing when we come to budgeting to budget and make sure that you have adequate resources. But those resources do not come from the moon. They come from taxes raised from Kenyans which, again, the same people who are pontificating about how well we should treat our doctors are the same people who are at the forefront of opposing the finance bill that was supposed to raise taxes to pay these doctors, Honorable Speaker. But, Honorable Speaker, the interns, Honorable Speaker, that are to be employed, yes, it is true, it may not be possible to pay 206,000 shillings. And I agree with the Honorable Chair Pukose, that just like all other interns in other professions, those engineers who are supposed to work under engineers for two years, lawyers like many of us, including the leader of minority, I don't know if he has uh, finished his pupillage. <laughs> when he's under pupillage, he earns a mere 25, I am told in some law firms, lawyers do not even earn anything. Those who are under pupillage... There is no obligation to pay a pupillage <laughs> student in law. And you know, Honorable Speaker, I will take your word as law because you have ran a law firm and an accomplished law firm. Therefore, lawyers, there is actually no obligation, as Honorable Speaker, you say, to pay intern lawyers under pupillage. So doctors, indeed, to earn what they are earning today are indeed among the most privileged professionals in our country. Honorable Speaker, beyond their, people, beyond their internship, Honorable Speaker, and this internship, Honorable Speaker, There's is a mandatory. Point of order, Majority Leader. Yes, Mwenje. Thank you, thank you Honorable Speaker. Stand on, uh, standing order number one. Is it in order, surely, for the Leader of Majority to compare a pupil who is not qualified to practice, who does not even appear in court, which is opposite to intern doctors who actually prescribe medicine? They actually treat people out there. So is it in order to compare those two professions? I'm a lawyer myself. I understand what I went through as a pupil. But that is very different from doctors, from intern doctors. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Mwenje, if you listen to Honorable. Dr. Bukose's very clear explanation, there is no difference. <laughs> there is no difference. When I was a, a master to the Honorable Soipan, the Honorable Kindiki, and many others, they actually were obligated to show gratitude, and that is all. 
But I'm not saying it's applicable to doctors because I don't want to wade into that. Majority leader is uh, on the floor. I'll give you. Th thank you, Honorable Speaker. Let me not respond because you have uh, responded to Honorable Mwenje, who claims to be a lawyer. The lawyer I know behind me, Honorable Speaker, is Honorable Njeri, who tells me that she would earn 12,000 shillings as a, as a pupillage uh, lawyer. Honorable Speaker, that's why I say this internship program can be likened to that pupillage, two years pupillage for lawyers, and also the two years postgraduate training practice for architects and engineers. And all these professions, Honorable Speaker, do not earn the quantum that our doctors are speaking. Honorable Speaker, when these doctors qualify after working under the supervision of qualified consultants and doctors, they join the public service at, the, at a grade higher than all other professionals. And those are facts, Honorable Speaker. And that means they earn more. But Honorable Speaker, it must also not be lost to the country that our intern doctors are making a very critical point and speaking to the architecture of our constitution. Our doctors for long have demanded the establishment of a health services commission, honorable speaker. Today, while the intern doctors feel mistreated, is because they are being overworked in our county government establishments. And the day we opted in 2010 to devolve, fully devolve our health services, Honorable Speaker, we did a great injustice, not just to medical professionals, but to the people of Kenya. Today, Honorable Speaker, whether you are in a level three hospital, a level four hospital, or a level one, or a health center, or a dispensary in your village, the person you will walk to treat you at your local dispensary is either a clinical officer, at your level three and level four hospitals are these intern doctors, Honorable Speaker. And they are being overworked by our governors and our county governments. That is a fact that we must state, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, the Council of Governors, Honorable Speaker, must come out and take their position, their rightful position, in ensuring that hospitals within our country and within their respective counties, first, they have qualified doctors, and two, that the intern doctors who work in those hospitals are not overworked. They are working under the supervision of other qualified personnel, Honorable Speaker. Because, Honorable Speaker, today, facts are different. That intern doctors are actually the ones running our county hospitals across the country without exception. Yes. And that's, those are facts, Honorable Speaker. They are carrying out surgeries, Honorable Speaker, without the supervision of qualified personnel. And therefore, these are issues, Honorable Speaker, that must not be left at the altar of the national government, but our council of governors and county governments must also take their rightful position, Honorable Speaker, because now this thing has been made to look like it is a question of the national government to deal with alone. Why it has become such a problem is because our health care is decaying and rotting under the hands of our county government. Yes. If you read all our audit reports, all the Auditor General's reports on our speaker, including those from my own county in Kiambu, billions of shillings are being lost and pilfered by governors who have no regard to either the medical professionals or indeed any other professionals working in our county government. But Honorable Speaker, because healthcare is a matter so dear to all of us, Honorable Speaker, I would beg and I would call on the striking doctors, whether it's medical interns, whether it is the clinical officers, whether it is the lab technicians, give dialogue a chance. And I say this because, Honorable Speaker, having co-chaired the National Dialogue Committee, I am now an experienced chair in that matters dialogue. And I can tell them dialogue does work. But dialogue will not work from the streets. Dialogue will work from your boardrooms oh, at the Ministry of Wind Health, yes. not at the gates of Parliament. Stop blocking parliamentarians from coming to speak on your behalf. We are here to speak on your behalf. They shouldn't block the Honorable Njeri or the Honorable Merian Keitani from accessing the gates of Parliament. Or indeed, the leader of minority who was coming, <laughs> or he joined them to address them. Honorable Speaker, they, they, we should uh, 
we, let me say we, we, we empathize with them, but we also want to appeal to our medical professionals that as we deal with the challenges that are there in our country, they are part and parcel of our nation. Any patient that we lose during this strike will never recover, will never get back their life. Thank Therefore, you. I want to appeal to them to get back to work. And those interns whose letters are already with their governors, please, medical interns, go pick up your letters and get back to work. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Dr. Nikal. Honorable members, you know, this was a progress or interim report on a petition. Uh, after Dr. Nikal, we'll move to something else. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving this opportunity. I feel sad that in this country... Prosecute your views quickly. You have three minutes. That in this country, when the lives of ordinary people is concerned, we, pick, we speak without feelings. Two days ago, a two-year-old child died literally in my house, having gone to hospital for two days and not seen. 